Okay, class, let's get things started here. Uh, first of all, uh, we last class period talked about systems of inequalities and solving those. Today in class, we talked more about the context, about what it means to solve system equations when given certain information. So today, I want to bring to you a problem that involves a context. So I'm going to read off my paper here. You can read along on the screen. Here's what's happening. Uh, Victor wants to buy up to 50 fruit trees to plant on some land that he just purchased. He also wants to plant only apple and peach trees, just two kinds. Each apple tree costs $22, and each peach tree costs $28. He has a maximum of $1,232 to spend, and he wants to spend it all on trees. There's a scenario. So we have a couple of things we don't know right now. We don't know how many trees he needs to buy, how many apple trees, and how many peach trees. So let's set up those two variables to begin. So first of all, we have that our x is going to be equal to apple trees. This is the number of apple trees. And our y is going to be equal to the number of peach trees. All right. Now we'll set up our system. The first thing we know is that we're going to have up to 50 trees. No more than 50 trees, up to it. Um, 50 could be included. So we're just going to set up our first linear inequality as x plus y is less than or equal to 50. This shows the combinations of x and y's that will strictly be less than 50 or equivalent to 50. Great. The second one has to do with money. Uh, we have to spend up to $1,232. Well, each apple tree costs $22. So we can write that out as $22 times the number of trees x. This gives you the total cost of the apple trees. Plus $28 times y. That's the number of, mon uh, number of <coughs> excuse me, the money spent on peach trees. 28 times the number of trees. That total has to be less than or equal to $1,232. So there's our system of linear inequalities. We're going to solve that. And we're going to solve that using the same intercepts method that we were using yesterday. So I'm going to put 0, comma, blank, blank, comma, 0. Start with the first equation. I let x be 0. And again, I want this to be equal to to find the line. So I find that y is equal to 50. If I repeat the process with y equaling 0, I have x plus 0 equals 50. And then find out that x equals 50. There's the first linear inequality. The second one now, let's, let's find the intercepts, and we'll graph them both at the same time. So do 0 comma blank, blank comma, oops, blank comma 0. And I'll let x be 0 here. You get 22 times 0 plus 28y is equal to 1,232. <clears throat> this goes to 0. I divide both sides by 28. If you did that in your calculator, you'd find that y is going to equal 44. Repeat the process for when y equals 0. <clears throat> I have 22x <clears throat> equals 12.32 divided by 22 get out that x is going to equal 56. Alright, now that we have our intercepts, we're going to make a sketch. Now we're going to make our sketch. So here we go. Put my lines here. I'm going to go up by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So there's my point 0, 50. <clears throat> And I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 as well. Plot that point. So we have our two coordinates, 0, 15, 50, 0. I go back to my equation. There's a line underneath it, so I should make this a solid line connecting these two points. There's the first one. Now we should graph the inequality portion. These are the combinations of x and y that are less than or equal to 50. So if I put this region in here, there's above the line or below the line. Here's 0, 0. I should check to see if 0, 0 works. 0 plus 0 is, in fact, less than or equal to 50. I should shade that. You also should think about every combination being smaller than or equal to 50. It would have to be the numbers that are below the line. Um, I'm not going to shade, however, this direction below or to the left of the y-axis or below the x-axis because we're dealing with trees here. And the trees have to be positive values. If you shade it down here, that would indicate negative values. If you shade it over here, negative values. So we're just going to be enclosed in that area. Second set of equations I'm going to draw on here as well, our second equation. 
put 0, 44 up. And remember, these are by 5s. So I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 44 is going to be between these two. Um, there's 45. So 44 would be right about there. All right? And we have 56, 0. This went to 50, so we're going to need to add an extra line on this. There's 55, and we know that 56 will be right to the other side of that. And again, I look to the inequality to see if I need a dot or a solid line. Yes, I see a solid line. So I'm going to connect these two, like so. And now I'm concerned about whether I shade above the line or below the line. Uh, so again, I look to, towards this 0, 0 to help us. And I have 22 times 0 plus 28 times 0. And see if that, in fact, is less than $1,230. Well, it will come out that 0 is, in fact, less than $1,232. So I should include the region that includes 0, 0, or down. Again, I'm concerned about not shading to the parts left and right of the axes. Those would give us values that are negative. So I'm going to shade below. OK, the last class here we talked about labeling correctly, about feasible versus not feasible. So we want to do that here, too. The doubly shaded region is our feasible region. These are the combinations that would allow us uh, to purchase trees and being less than or equal to 50 in the combination and including our money values. So everything in the doubly shaded region is feasible. This singly shaded region here is not feasible. That represents the number of trees that would still allow us to be beneath 50, but it doesn't meet our cost constraint. This down here is not feasible either because this represents the trees going over a combination of 50 but still meeting less than our cost constraints. So those are not feasible regions. And then again, this area above here is not feasible either. That meets neither constraint. All right, that's how we graph this with the constraints. What we're going to be talking about next time we get together is that point, this point, and this point, known as the vertices of a feasible region. We'll get to that next time.